Lunar Landing Restored for Artemis IV Mission NASA has gone ahead with plans for a moon landing on its Artemis IV mission to the moon later this decade, months after saying the mission would be devoted to assembling the lunar gate. Let's know more about it. Moon Landing at Artemis IV In an October 28 presentation at the American Astronautical Society's Werner von Braun Memorial Symposium, Mark Harisic, NASA Assistant Administrator for Artemis Campaign Development, outlined a sequence of Artemis missions in NASA books through the late 1920s. This includes Artemis IV, which he describes as the second time humans have landed on the moon. Under Artemis after the mission Artemis III, however, Kasich and other NASA officials said earlier this year that NASA was not planning a moon landing at Artemis IV. Instead, they said the complexity of the mission, which would include sending the IHAB residence module to Gateway and flying a version of the Space Launch System Block 1B, upgraded ruling out a moon landing. Kasich confirmed after the panel that NASA had decided to allow Artemis IV to land again. NASA announced in March that it would use Option B in its Human Landing Systems contract with SpaceX, which initially included an Option A lander that SpaceX would demonstrate on its Artemis III mission. Option B would include changes to Starship lander funding to support more ambitious missions. In a latter continuous phase of Artemis and includes a second demonstration mission. NASA announced it would fund Option B while also disclosing efforts to advance lunar development to select suppliers for a second lunar lander for this next mission. Kasich said it was unlikely the landers selected in the program would be ready in time for Artemis IV and would instead be demonstrated on Artemis V. Timeline In a timeline released as part of the agency's proposed fiscal year 2023 budget in March, days after the announcement of the SLD program, NASA envisions the launch of Artemis IV in 2027, but without a moon landing. The same schedule is for the launch of Artemis III as early as 2025, with Artemis V following in 2028 as part of a series of annual missions. However, this date depends on several factors. One is the readiness of the Starship variant lander. During another panel at the symposium, NASA and SpaceX officials said they were making good progress with the lander, but provided few technical details or timelines. Rene Ortega, NASA's chief HLS engineer, praised SpaceX for giving the agency access to hardware and test data from the entire Starship launch vehicle development effort. The Artemis IV schedule will also depend on the readiness of the IHAB module being developed by Europe and Japan, as well as the SLS Block 1B itself. This version of SLS, which uses the more powerful exploration upper stage, in turn requires a new mobile launch platform. Mobile Launcher Now let's see the variety of second launchers. Variety of second launchers NASA is currently submitting proposals for the SLD program, formerly known as Appendix P, to the Next Space Technology Exploration Partnership, or Next Step. NASA published a call for proposals on September 16, with an initial deadline of November 15. NASA has moved the deadline from October 21 to December 6 to give the agency more time to review the applications from companies to use government facilities. During the October 28 conference session, NASA and several companies declined to discuss details about future SLD deliveries, including whether they would submit proposal and, if so, who they would work with. However, they discussed work on a separate Next Step project, Appendix N, to support work on sustainable lunar landing technology. NASA selected five companies for $146 million in September 2021 to research key technologies for such a lander. Several companies have used the Annex N award to continue working on their proposed concept in the original HLS competition. Dianetics felt that we had a very strong approach from the foundation phase, so we appreciated the opportunity to refine this design during Annex N, said Andy Crocker, program manager for Dianetics HLS. He said the company is working on about 20 different the risk tasks in the lander design, including the landing engine, which uses liquid oxygen and methane. The company had conducted a static fire test on this machine a week earlier, he said. Blue Origin competed for the Option A award, which SpaceX eventually won as part of a so-called national team that included Lockheed Martin and Northrop Grumman, two companies that have won separate awards in Appendix N. These companies are investigating approaches different for a lunar lander. Vice President's Point of View Kirk Sharman, Vice President of Lunar Exploration Campaigns at Lockheed Martin, said, 
His company was researching the integration of nuclear thermal propulsion in the lander's architecture believed to be the key to future human exploration of Mars. Having a high thrust engine and a high ISP is the key to our future, he said. He said the company is working on technologies such as cryogenic fluid management, fuel testing, and turbo pump design. He later said that the nuclear propulsion system would be used to transit between Earth and the Moon. He said, this continues the great work, the great relationship we had through Appendix N, so hopefully we can continue that under Appendix P when that happens. So that was all for today, folks. Hope you liked the video. Please subscribe for more informative videos like this one.